Okay, welcome back, and we are continuing our discussion of architecture. This is Unit 4, and when we last left off, we were covering um, just all the different types of uh, barrel vaults and groin vaults, including the, um, the Gothic ribbed groin vault. And in the, in the Gothic architecture, what we have is a combination of all these different parts where we have uh, ribbing, we have pointed arches, we have groin vaults, but on top of that also, the groin vaults are now being used to make intersections that are not just right angle intersections of like one barrel vault with another, but all kinds of different um, intersections. And so things expand in terms of potential types of changes of angles, but also expand in terms of height. And so here we have uh, some examples of Gothic architecture. and. This is a good place for us to talk a little bit about one of the other themes to this whole lecture, right? Theme number one was kind of like the ancient metaphors that people were, were using as a starting point for why they made the spaces the way they did. We talked about the, the sacred mountain, the sacred cave, the sacred grove as kind of three kind of archetypes. And, and then the other major theme of this, of this lecture is engineering. It's just the different um, means of raising and, and lifting weight, of, of conveying weight, of bearing weight, um, and how people have used that in buildings to make taller buildings, more expansive buildings. But um, another theme th through uh, this lecture, um, which I'm getting to right now, is the theme of what is the purpose of architecture? Or another way to think about it, what is um, the thing that makes an architectural space like this art, whereas like your average space, like let's say the auditorium of the art history room in the art building, those of you who have been there, it's you know very utilitarian. I don't think you would call that room as a space art. Um, so what is, how does that work? What's the difference? So one of the themes uh, or one of the um, possible purposes I've laid out is that the purpose of architecture is to create spaces that people can move through and that where the movement through those sp spaces is moving and interesting, right? And I think we can definitely see that in Gothic architecture and therefore the, the playing in Gothic architecture with the scale and with the lift, you know, of uh, spaces where the ceiling is relatively low and then expanding up to these spaces where the ceiling is beautifully high um, has a, an emotional impact to it. Related to that is another kind of theme or purpose, which is that architecture is about the manipulation of light, right? And we definitely see that in Gothic architecture, like if you look at this view of Rouen Cathedral. So those are two. We'll talk about some more along the way um, as to what the different purposes are. And there are some in the notes. I'm not sure I cover all of the ones that are in the notes, um, but make sure to pay attention to the notes and to the reading as well as to this lecture. So continuing on sort of historically, let's talk about um, what happened post-Gothic. In the Renaissance, we had to a certain degree an interest in classical architecture and an interest in Romanesque architecture. And the Renaissance architects used these different influences to create a wholly new type of space. Um, and Renaissance architecture um, was much more pared down and simple. You relied much more on basic um, geometric forms. Wherever they could, arches were perfectly circular. Wherever they could use barrel vaulting, they chose barrel vaulting over more complex forms of vaulting. And look at the, the beauty of this barrel vault here. Um, so, um, let's see, anything else I want to say about that? And I guess, um, so to a certain degree, it was a little bit of a look backwards, but it was looking backwards to find kind of a new thing. Um, and, uh, but what it didn't have necessarily was in, in the Gothic architecture, this is, there's a sense of kind of continual uplift, the sense of weightlessness, the sense the building is raising up that ceiling in a way that is almost magical, almost impossible. Whereas in the Renaissance architecture, there was a return to the more traditional ancient aesthetic that the purpose of architecture is the conveyance of weight, making the movement of weight believable. 
Um, and there you go. That's another theme that we were talking about. So, um, but the Renaissance as a period didn't last all that long. And by the end of the Renaissance period, we enter this Mannerist period. And at the very kind of end of the Mannerist period, um, Il Gesù was built. And as I said, you could either think of it as the last Mannerist uh, church or the first great Baroque church. Um, but either way, it really kind of sets the standard and the, the idea for Baroque architecture. And my, even though in form, right, in terms of like the structure of these columns and everything, in form, this is quite heavily indebted to Renaissance architecture. In spirit, I think it's closer to the spirit of Gothic architecture. And here's my, my reasoning why, right, which is that it's much more about creating the illusion of uplift and not creating the illusion of weight bearing, right? It's not trying to convince us it can hold this weight. It's trying to convince us that there is no weight to hold, that this building is just soaring upwards. Um, it's doing it in a very different way from the Gothic, but it is doing kind of a similar thing. And I think that's kind of interesting. And I think both in the Gothic and Il Gesù, we in some ways see kind of an alternate model to those initial three metaphors for, for ancient architecture, you know, the sacred grove, the sacred mountain, the, the sacred cave. Here we have a new one, which is the model is kind of the heavens themselves. And now we're moving into um, modernist architecture and we have a little bit of time so I can cover it um, hopefully pretty, pretty intensely. So Another theme that we hadn't talked about, but really becomes an important theme, an important theory in a way about what the importance and what the aesthetics of buildings is all about is utilitarianism, right? It's the idea of saying that the purpose of a building is to serve the people that live and use that building in the way that they want and need to use that building, right? And anything that is superfluous to that is superfluous and needs to be removed. And all aesthetic decisions should be geared towards that utility. Um, and it's a very kind of modernist sort of notion, very tied into the whole schools of design, uh, like the Bauhaus. And, but I think it is an important kind of um, counter metaphor to all the very uh, almost romantic metaphors of like architecture is about moving through space, architecture is about creating uh, movements of light, uh, creating an experience. Um, and here, you know, these architects are saying architecture is about the building serving its residents or, or those people who use it, um, the, treating a building like a tool. And that is one, um, one point of view. And it leads to architecture that is very pared down, very, very reduced um, and very gorgeous um, in its own right. And then we get to, to the end of the lecture. Now we're talking about two contemporary um, architects. We're going to be talking about Frank Gehry and Richard Meyer. And the main point I want to talk about with these two is to get you to think about how all of these different um, experiences are kind of combined. We can, in, in just in the career of these two architects, we can see, let's say, for example, in the Getty Museum here by Richard Meyer, we can see um, very much of a point of view similar to the Acropolis. And with that, we have the embrace of, um, of the, uh, the embrace of, of architecture as like the sacred mountain and the sacred journey up the sacred mountain as part of architecture. We have the embrace of kind of, um, the sacred grove and oop, that's my one minute warning. And so we have an, the idea of utilitarianism is very much a part of Richard Meyer's aesthetic. The idea of architecture creating interesting spaces that you move through is very much part of Frank Gehry's aesthetic. They're both quite interested in creating interesting movements of light. So all the different themes about, and I guess the other thing I want to say is like the idea of weight bearing, right? We can see that very clearly in, in uh, Richard Meyer's work, right? Showing clear, clearly how um, weight is bare. And then the opposite, right? In a way, you can almost say that Frank Gehry is taking that aesthetic of, of Gothic and Baroque architecture and applying it to the exteriors of buildings, where the exteriors of the buildings look impossible, like they can't possibly hold themselves. Um, and that's just kind of a continuation of that aesthetic idea. So all of those things um, continue into the contemporary architecture.